Hello, I'm Connie Rotella, and welcome to our Triple Thread Podcast. I'm super excited to begin this journey with all of you. Are you ready to put your best foot forward and show up with confidence? This tool is here to help you evolve into the artist you are meant to be. Just always remember to believe, become, and be ready. Add a new skill set or refine what you already know. So here we go. Hello, I'm excited to introduce you to Albert Chambers. He's a music producer, director. What else, Albert? What is your title? Well, um, foremost, I'm a songwriter, producer, and now... Uh, since the pandemic started, I actually got into videography. So I've been doing a lot of videos lately uh, and finding out that I actually have a passion for it. I really, I really love it. But songwriting, producing and owning, you know, Studio Basement, which is a, uh, a fully equipped rehearsal recording and now videography facility in Montreal. It's amazing, Albert. And I'm so excited to speak with you because more and more today, we are getting younger and younger in wanting to produce our own material. I have a lot of songwriters, like a lot of young kids that are creating, that are uh, writing their lyrics, that are writing their, their songs. And you know what? I had to speak to you because there's so many questions that need to be answered. And maybe we can help them understand step by step what they can do. Sure. Let, let's start by step one. Um, You know, if you're an aspiring uh, songwriter, um, I mean, writing down, you know, lyrics from based on ideas is one thing. And I think a lot of times people find that I find that when I listen to demos from younger kids, I think that probably the biggest error that I find is that they don't actually like understand the form of a song and understanding uh, how many bars to come in, uh, you know, it's like before your first verse and then adding your pre-chorus and how long should your pre-chorus be or how long should your chorus be? They kind of go by feel and they kind of say to themselves, you know, well, I want to be original. I don't want to be like anybody else. But copying the form of a song is not actually copying a song. It's just understanding form and understanding how the human, especially in Western civilization we understand and we feel when a pre-course is going to happen and when a course is going to happen when it's going to build up we don't have to know about music theory to understand that <gasps> the chorus is coming you understand that because we've formulated songwriting in the pop contemporary world to be oh two bar intro four bar uh verse eight bar chorus you know it's like it constantly follows that type of pattern so the listener understands oh that's i understand that's where it's going if you would take something from the east and you would you'd make somebody listen to it they would lose their span of attention within a second because they don't understand the form and they don't understand what's coming and what what's not because there is a formulated system to pop contemporary music they you have to understand that if you want to engage the listener, you want to keep their attention, you have to understand that you don't have to do like an eight bar intro. You're going to lose the listener. You need to get their attention like so fast, especially today. I mean, you know, we went from like putting posts to tweets that last two seconds to now, you know, reels that are like 30 seconds. And if you uh, people go through reels, like they listen to watch five seconds of it. And if they're not interested, boom, they're gone. You know what? So, yeah, that's that's amazing what you're just saying. You said so many good key points. Hold on a second. But how did he get educated? Like you, there's so much tools that you just said in the first five minutes. I'm like, how did he get educate, educated? Educated. Oh, it's so easy. It's so simple. You have like literally today. You literally have like let's let, listen. I learned how to be a videographer within a year. I was literally getting paid. You know to like do videos for people because I got all my information on learning about exposure, white balance, you know, lighting, key lights, hair lights, you know, like I I learned everything about videography on YouTube. So if you want to study how to write a good song, listen to your favorite song. I don't care if it's Billie Eilish or like what, listen to the form of how she writes and go and count. If you don't have any basic knowledge of theory, if you have some form of tempo, and if the song starts, one, two, three, 
four and she starts singing after four beats, then do that. Write a song and start doing your form of your song and do a couple of chords and then count yourself in. One, two, three, four. You know, start. Then follow the form of whatever she's doing. Don't follow the chords. Don't follow the melody. I'm just strictly saying when she turns left, turn left. If she <laughs> turns right, turns right. We're talking about the beat formula in a 4-4 beat. So you don't have to really know a lot about theory. But if you know how to count and you know how to keep time, then you're, you're, you're pretty much like halfway there. You know, so that, that th those are the important things. Just follow the people that inspire you music wise. When people come in and want to produce uh, a song with me, the first thing they do is they go, well, I wrote a song and then they show me the song and their forms are all over the place. But then I go, who do you like? And then they give me an example of an artist, you know, that they, they like, you know, it's like whether it's Ariana Grande or like I said, Billie Eilish, whatever. I put the song on. And I'm like, well, this song is like half the speed of what you're doing, but you want your song to sound like this, but you already started with the tempo that was too fast. So it's all about understanding tempo, feel, time, you know, and that's how you, that's how they should start by just listening to the things that they love and imitate it. Get yourself, buy yourself a little metronome. You don't have to have a computer. To, uh, all you do is have a metronome, put it next to the song, match it to the tempo of the song and start playing your guitar or your instrument or even singing in your phone to that tempo. That's a good start. No, that's a wonderful start. But you said something about feeling. Now they go with their feeling. But so how is it that they can gauge when the feeling is right and when the feeling is off? Well, you have to understand that, you know, it's like the feeling has to remain, but the, the rules of contemporary pop, you know, music and the forms have to have to remain. You know, it's like, yes, the rules, you have to understand the rules before they can be broken. Oh, right. Yes. So you, so, so you have, you, you can go like, listen, a, a tennis player, when, when you go to tennis lessons, they tell you, keep your feet on the ground. When you're go, following through with your forehand, keep your both feet planted solid on the ground. You'll see pros like both of their feet are completely lifted off the ground when they're slamming, slamming that forehand. Because they understood the rules already, and then they learned how to adapt that form to break the rules. But you got to know how to like keep your form steady before you can start breaking the rules. So understand the rules of the form of a pop contemporary song, and then you can maybe break the rules by going out of that realm. So keep the feeling, but understand that I got to redo this form because this is not working in pop contemporary music anymore. Because most kids, that's what you're doing. You're playing. If you want to play pop contemporary music, you got to understand there's a form. There's a formula to it. No, definitely. And after they learn that skill set, and you know, do that research and learn, and what's the next phase for them? Uh, well, you know, sometimes you're going to write a song based on your limitations of either your ability, meaning you being able to sing. Uh, melodies you know it's like a, a, some people have this natural ability but and, and then some people have a little bit more theory behind them so they understand scales and they understand you know how to go into you know a different pre-chorus and maybe you know it's like and, and what key their would they their voice best sounds in all of those all of those things are, are key elements but the i think the most important thing is to sort of gradually try to go within your capability so if you if you play an instrument, obviously you're going to be writing to the ability of your instrument. So a lot of times you'll see kids doing very slow tempo songs because they can't change chords as fast as, you know, the next. So that's going to be a reoccurring theme that I see happening is they're playing ballads because they can't change chords any faster than that, which is fine. Now, if you're, if you're, if you're going to, if you're going to do that, then then do that. But if you, if you don't have the ability to do that, then it's really good to play with somebody that's better than you and play with somebody, a company that accompanies you. So if you can't, don't have the money to hire a producer and, and a songwriting partner to, to help you write your songs, then just uh, try to collaborate with people that are always a little bit better than you. So that, that way you learn and you can actually develop your skills, you know, it's like a, a lot 
better. A lot of times I'll have younger artists come in and play their song, but I'll always have a, a real piano player come in and reconform those chords into a lot more mature voicings to bring the song to another level. Because I know where they want to go, but they just don't have the theory behind it to be able to do that. So playing with other people that are a little bit more knowledgeable theory-wise will definitely, you know, take you a long way also. Albert, you're so inspiring. You should be teaching this every day, but I know you're so busy producing so many uh, music and music videos now. That's what you're doing. Um, yeah. I, you would be a great teacher. It's too bad they don't have classes like they would, you know, I come from a dance background, so there's a studio for that. Right. So yeah. I, it's too bad there's not a place where all these creators, young, because more and more, I find they're younger and younger. And I, I'm talking from experience because my son is 16. He just turned 16. And I'm literally standing in his home studio where he sees himself as you later on, you know, like I'm looking at you in your big sure. studio at uh, basement. And here he is in his little basement studio wanting this so well, bad, then, but he wants yeah. too much. And his little experience cannot like as much as research and he sings Elton John and did all that research, he still has years ahead of him to learn so much more. You never stop learning. That's the, that's the reason why I got into this industry is that I've never stopped learning from the time that I, I started writing songs and just collaborating with people, like I said, that were better than me, that had more experience than me. And I think the first time that I actually like wrote lyrics for somebody that was sending me music was actually a guitar player for April wine, Gary Moffat. And Gary would send me songs and uh, he just sent me like a piano track or a guitar track. And within an hour or two, I would like sing something over it, write, write lyrics and send it back to him. And after a while of doing that repetitious back and forth, he's like, you need to fly on your own, man. You know, like you're, you know, you got, you got something. My wife always wants me to work with you, you know? And I was like, well, that, that's like a great, like inspiring, you know, kicking the, kicking the pants, you know, to get, get me going. And, uh, and the things that I learned about songwriting, you know, down the road, I understood, you know, lyrically also a lot of things that a lot of kids, when they write, they don't even understand if they're actually have a subject in mind. And I go, and I'll ask them, oh, what's this song about? Because if, if they sing me the song and I don't understand the story and I can't get what the message is, but they say, oh, well, it's about this, this, because they're speaking and, and too many metaphors and they're not getting the message across, then you're losing an audience that can relate to the song and be able to go, oh, that's, I know exactly what they're talking about, that I went through that. You need to touch people. And you need to, you know, it's like, and sometimes, you know, they go, well, I want to be original and blah, blah, blah. Well, original, trying to be too original sometimes will not get you heard at all. So you need to understand that you need to have things that sound similar to what the audience is, you know, used to listening to. But at the same time, your originality comes out in the way that you interpret that your voice, the tone of your voice, you know, you know, all these artists that come out and they write song, love songs, you know, they all we're all singing about the same things. But what makes them different? The sound uh, sonically and and their interpretation and their voice, you know, so the, so the tone of their voice brings it to another color and it touches different people in different ways. You know, so and, and, and lyrically, what's really important is that they they got to understand that if you're going to be telling a story, then don't write. This is the most common thing that I see is that they write a very cool first line and then they write another really cool line and then they write another cool line. And this is all within the first verse. But none of those things actually connect. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. The, 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 there's no correlation between the first line and the second line. They sound good sonically phonetically and it's like it's really a pleasing to the ear but you lost me because i don't know what you're singing about anymore so your first line and your second line have to connect and then when you go to your next line and the next line they have to connect to that it's, it's it, they, the listener has to know what the story is about within 30 seconds i less, love you know. the straight talk you're so honest and at the beginning yeah. you said we have to know in the first 30 seconds where you're going and it's like that for anything right in voice work or anything show me what you got in the first 30 seconds in order for me to keep listening to you and sure. you know being a storyteller like i, I don't know does it 
do you feel like artists that have already have a passion, like a passion that they can speak about? So that means they can write about like storytellers that take acting classes or that take any kind of dance or hockey, like people that have a passion. Is it easier for them to write lyrics? People that claim to be songwriters that come in. I mean, I, I more than often, you know, retouch a lot of their lyrics, if not sometimes all of them. Uh, just because I want to, you know, I want to understand what they're trying to say. So I, I, I often, you know, try to push them. And um, I often try to say, listen, um, I challenge them to, to tell me what this song is about in their words and don't say, well, it's something really personal. That's why, you know, it's like it, maybe it's hard for somebody to understand. I go, well, I want everybody to understand it because you're not making music. If you want to make music just for yourself in your living room, well, then that's great. You can write all the metaphors you want and nobody can understand what you're talking about. And it's all great. But if you're coming to me to uh, make sure that this gets out to uh, a larger audience than your friends and your family, well, then I, I have to like say when I'm you lost me. Yes. And, it's you know, connection. Right? Yes. Yeah. Connection. yeah. It's all about, it's all, it's all about. So, I mean, having a skill set and being able to, you know, somebody that does drama uh, and does improvisational skills, you know, that has the, those things. Yeah, yeah. Maybe words come easily, you know, a little bit more easy to them, but um, choosing words, sometimes it's not even just like telling a story. Sometimes, you know, it's a fine line between getting to the point and using really, really, really simpleton type of like words, which are too common. And then you got to wor use words that are still cool and yet fit the genre. Like if I'm doing rock, then I'm going to say words like, you know, uh, ripped. Uh, you know, it's like if I'm talking about a uh, heartbreak, I'm going to I'm going to say, you know, words like ripped. Um, that might not work in a, a, a ballad that's like, I don't know, in like an Adele type of adult contemporary, you know, it's like to the core, uh, things that are really harsh and hard. So it depends what the, the genre of music that you're doing to the words that you're, you're picking. So you, you, you have to think about who your audience is. And that, that's another, you know, key point of when you're writing a song, who are you speaking to? Like if it's a, obviously if it's a 15 year old kid, then you're speaking to your peers right you know it's like so you're writing about subjects that would affect you know a 15 year old uh but it's weird but because a lot of times you know like a, a 15 year old uh might be attracted to things that somebody that's talking about like you know a subject that's more in their their 20s you know it's yeah. like uh you know what i mean so it's like you constantly have to like gauge okay who who your audience is and who you're speaking to i have i've uh, you know fr friends of mine like the guys from simple plan you know, they, they have an audience that's much younger than, you know, like that they probably would, you know, you, you know, like they, they, they love and appreciate and they adore their audience, but they're not going to have the same audiences as Foo Fighters. You know, Foo Fighters are my age they're in their fifties. Yeah. You know? So, I mean, the demographic like speaks to who, you know, it's like they go, yeah, I can relate to those guys, the way they look, the way they, you know, they dress, they do everything, you know, it's like, so uh, it, when you're writing a song, you just got to understand, you know, who do you think your audience is going to be? If you're 15 years old, you're not going to have 20 something year olds, you know? Yeah. And I have a question you. there because I, I receive a lot of people make, you know, like the teens, the young adults, they just send it to me for me to listen. And I'm in my forties. Right. So will I right. connect the same way to someone at 15 speaking about their love story that they don't they haven't experienced what love story is and they have it in their own words. Will I connect? Sure. So I might be in the wrong public to give them advice. Right. Because, you sure. know, some, and especially sure. they want to always take on these big subject at a young age. And it's like, Whoa, have you experienced what all this means? You know, and that's a common, that's a common thing with you, with younger people. And that, and that's okay. That's okay. You know, if it, because if I remember right, if you would have told me I wasn't in love when I was 15 years old to my first serious girlfriend, I would have said, you're absolutely insane. I am absolutely in love and I know what it feels like and I know what it is <laughs> and try to convince them that you weren't, you know, it's like, forget it. So you can't tell them that their feelings at their age aren't valid, right? Their feelings are valid and they, they, 
they do exist and they will. I mean, you know, their kids, I mean, taking it to a serious level, kids are committing suicide at 15, 12 years old. So don't ever think that whatever they're feeling, you know, because they're of their age, isn't, should, shouldn't be taken seriously. So this they're, is they're, a great way out for them to express themselves through art, through music. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I, I've written albums for, for people that were, they were like, this is the best money I've ever spent. Like I've spent more money on therapy that, than I ever have. Uh, no, I've had clients spend money on producing records where they felt like, wow, this was better than any therapy that I've ever gone through. It's the like, best therapy. Right? Writing down how I was feeling breakups. Uh, uh, the record that I actually co-wrote with Cora Legan for, uh, you know, uh, the year you drove me crazy. That was an album that, that got nominated in 2014 for Juno. And that song was probably 90% about her boyfriend at the time. Mm -hmm. And I wrote, you know, like a good part of that record lyrically, um, talking about, you know, and hearing her talk about what she needed to say about her boyfriend. Mm -hmm. And it was like literally almost like the whole record. Wow. And that's why it was titled The Year He Drove Me Crazy. Oh, and it's what a perfect title. Uh, Parents should definitely invest in um, in listening to their child, especially if they have a passion for writing. I mean, for me, I feel like, especially if they're starting younger and younger about speaking about these heavy duty subjects, we should maybe start listening. Like adults should really start listening and maybe giving them, I know it's all school. A lot of parents are all about school, 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 and kids are stressed out of their mind. But we need to give them an outlet where to express themselves in order for them to complete um, themselves, right? Like, I mean, fall in love with yeah. themselves. Songwriting is awesome for that. I don't know how many young kids have come in and sang about, you know, people that have like broken their hearts and everything. And we're talking that 15 years old, you know, and 16 years old. Like, yeah, they've they've felt some serious pain and even their their young years, but putting it down on paper and actually you know, helping them, you know, be able to describe what they're feeling, what's inside their head and what's inside their soul is definitely, definitely been, you know, uh, uh, a help, you know, for, for their psyche and for their confidence and, and to actually just be heard and to understand, so, oh my God, you, you get it, you know? And I was like, I don't ask me how I'm able to like, you know, transform my brain into like a 15 year old, you know, girl going through heartache. That's just the artist, you know, the artist in me where super artists are super sensitive and they're super, super like, you know, hypersensitive almost when it comes to like emotions and things like that. So I think we're, we're you know, even if I have a younger artist that's in here, I get it. I feel it. Yeah. I've been there. Yeah. I can. I, and I, I'm not ashamed to write it down no matter how sappy it might sound. Uh, you know, at times, uh, some people limit themselves. Also, they go, I don't want to use the word love. And I'm like, are you kidding me? You know, I mean, <laughs> hits were working with, you know, hits were made with the word love. You know, it's like unbelievable. Definitely. How many years have you been doing this? Uh, well, I've been in, I've had my studios for 26 years now and been basically, I think my first show was like at 15 years old. So Okay, long so, time. So this long. is like literally, but you're so lovable. I'm like, your energy is so amazing. How many artists have you worked in in the last 26 years or even more? Yeah, I can. I okay, can. no, you can't. I, Just name me the top three. Yeah. Who did you like? <laughs> um, well, I, I've worked with um, quite a few, uh, like lately in the last year or two, uh, I guess in the last few, I guess for a few, few years, um, I've done some work for Debbie Gibson, uh, Corey Hart. Um, I worked with, uh, Harvey Mason Jr. Who is behind all the vocals and all the movies for pitch perfect. Uh, he's worked with John legend and all any type of movie where there's singing involved. You're Harvey the Mason Jr. Harvey Mason Jr. Has like been part of it. And I, I had the, the pleasure of him coming down to Montreal where we, we were recording for this movie that was supposed to be um, uh, filmed in Montreal. They started filming and they ran out of, they ran out of budget that Samuel L. Jackson on the crew and the, and the whole bit. And uh, uh, yeah, working alongside of him and working with producers that where I had to like take a back seat and just act as an engineer and watch how he works with these singers. I worked with the singer called Pink Sweats 
uh, uh, during that time, check him out. Like the guy's blowing up. He's like basically with every artist, Bieber, like he, he collaborates with everybody now. And, uh, and when he came in, when they came into the studio, I mean, these singers are just like next level, you know, the key flew in from Philadelphia and Harvey Mason Jr. flew in from LA and, and, and just working with like, like guys like that, like I just, it's humbling. And at the same time, you know, it's like you, you just, you're just quiet and you listen and you, you want to, cause you want to learn from the best, you know, it's like, how did you get to where you were? You know, it's like, but a lot of the times it's, it's all about being humble and, and, and being, bringing an energy to the room. And, you know, it's like, you'll, you know, it's like a lot of times, you know, it's like, it's not so much, uh, how much, you know, but how you can make somebody feel when they come in to work with you. And if you can bring the best out of people, then a lot of times you don't have to have a lot of technical skills and you don't have to have a lot of theory behind you. Um, I think you have to be a people person, number one, and there are tons of producers out there that don't have a lot of technical skills, but they're some of the biggest producers in the world that they understand what they want to hear and they understand how to direct the musicians into getting there. You know, it's like, so I think it's, I think it's important to be uh, humble and to understand that one day I might be working with, you know, a, a, a producer like Harvey Mason Jr. And then, the, you know, sitting next to me. And then the next day I'm cleaning the toilets here at the studio because there's no staff, you know, like that's cool. It's all good. They're my toilets. You yeah. know, it's like I'm fine. I'm fine with that. But you have to be you have to be humble. But you also have to, like, rise to the occasion, too. And it's like when when opportunity knocks and when people ask you, you know, it's like I I was asked once another one particular gig that scared the crap out of me, but I had some friends that they're uh, from a company called Fogo Labs. They do all the live DVD shows for like bands like they've done a lot of more set Slipknot, Billy Talent, uh, Rush, Juan Juno's for Rush or for their live DVDs. And they asked me to go to Boston with them to um, record a uh, 64 piece the 64 piece Berkeley orchestra accompanying Grammy Grammy nominated band dream theater at the Boston opera house. And that was without me ever recording an orchestra before, but they understood my work ethic. They understood that when you work with people, they have to be people that are like-minded and that are easygoing and fun to be with. And obviously they understood that I had the technical capabilities to be able to do what I had to do. And they had almost more confidence in me than I did. Mm -hmm. But to, to say yes to a gig like that, it's like, you're like, okay, all of these years of working have like pretty much dialed myself into this day to be able to show that I can do what I, I can, I can do. And so you, you, but you have to be able to get along with people. I have no tons of musicians and artists that are amazing musicians, but they bring the energy level in the, in the room, like totally down, you know, it's like, and, and people that have said, I can't work with that person. That person just sucks the energy out of the room. They're amazing. It's amazing drummer, but I can't, I can't handle being in the room. So you're like, wow. Okay. So you, you have to understand that, you know, being human and being humble are like, I think, two of the biggest aspects, you know, it's like re that you need to be in this industry and humble big time. Because like I said, one day you might be working with like some awesome people and the next day you're not. So remember those people that you've passed on the way up because they ain't that far behind, you know? You're so you're right. I feel so lucky to be able to speak with you. And how lucky are all of you songwriters, future songwriters, listening to everything Albert is saying today, just the work ethic, being humble. Um, I also feel like the universe led you there. You know, you started at 15, you had a passion and look at where you are at now, but it just did not happen overnight. You worked at it hours on end. You, you know, live four minutes away from the studio. I asked you before, do you live in there? Do you, do you just like live in your studio? <laughs> well, I mean, even, even when I didn't live close to the studios, yes. I mean, you're, you're spending hundreds of hours a week, you know, at the studio and, and you're, uh, uh, don't, don't let it be fooled that it just doesn't happen. You know, just because you're passionate about something you have to put in the hours. And, um, after a while you start to work a little smarter and less hard. Yeah. And you choose your, and it's, it's great to be able to have a couple of like accolades where you, you, you can start choosing your gigs and, and start saying, well, I, 
you know, I'd rather not do that because I don't think that I could really help that much in that, in that process and not saying yes to everything, but saying yes to things that you feel that you can really, really add something to and, mm-hmm. and, and not think that you can do, do it all. And it's okay. You, mm-hmm. Everybody has their strengths and their weaknesses. And I definitely know my, my, I definitely know my weaknesses. So it's like, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. Yeah. Albert, I I learned so much just listening for the last 20 minutes, but now that I'm thinking of all these songs or all these writers that are sending me whatever they've done with their producer, just like anything, you know, if I go for a ballet class, I can have a top A ballet teacher or a ballet teacher that's just going to make me bend my knees and make me flex my feet, you know, like, so, and make me have fun and not teach me the technique. Now, I'm just wondering is there a difference? Like, because everybody's producing, but how do we know which one is helping in the right direction? Uh, well, that's, that's pretty easy. I mean, like I said, it's, it's, it's a people person type thing, right? So um, I think that it's a rarity to have producers that are able to teach some producers. Actually, I've known producers that have singers cry and leave, leave you know, literally leave the studio crying and they're like don't come back till you got it got it down like i don't have time to be a teacher some producers do not have time to to do that and they they will not settle for anything but perfection when you come into the studio a lot of times i understand that people they don't have experience they come in they're reading the lyrics off of the sheet you know when they're coming in to do a vocal session it's like you should have learn that song before you walked into the studio but i understand that sometimes this is the place where they come in for the first time and i have to make them understand that this is a learning process and for the next time you might want to learn the song before because when you're reading a song and you're reading the lyrics you cannot hone into that emotion when you just read the word love you should have known that love is about to to happen and understand that I got to put some emphasis on that word. But when you've read it, it's already gone. It's done. The emotion is gone. And you're never going to have the same emotion when you're singing, when you know what you're singing about and you know the words, as opposed to reading off of a sheet. Like there's no way that you're going to get the same emotion. There's no way. There's no way. No, of course, it's interpretation. But wait a second. They should already come in with a bit of vocal training, right? You, I'm, I'm sure you're not seeing people coming in that can't sing. Of course, there, there I, I have situations where, uh, you know, it's like I don't I try not to do any of those sessions anymore. You know, I have my 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 employees like actually record. But if 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 there's a vocalist and if somebody's I'm working on a song and they specifically ask for me, it's because they're usually more accomplished. And they just want me to add something either to the vocal arrangement, harmony arrangements, uh, counter melodies, uh, melodies, even helping with the melody ideas and things like that. So, um, yeah, no, but there there are people, yeah, for sure, that come into the studio and their parents tell them that they know how to sing and they everybody says that they know how to sing. And then they come into the studio and I'm like, yeah, you don't know how, how to, to sing. That. And this is where honesty is so important. Parents, if you're listening or any young adults, I know you've got this. I know you want it badly, but you guys have to take time to train and do it right. What's the point? There are tons of great vocal teachers. You know, it's like Kim Richardson, you know, know. it's like uh, Aaron Elizabeth Hibbard. Uh, She's another one for real pop stuff. It's like, oh my God, there's an amazing personas would get that, that are almost like cheerleaders at the same time as they're teaching. Like, they're unbelievable. So, uh, yeah, you, you should get some training before you come into the studio and you should be prepared and you should have, you know, know your lyrics and, you know, but it's a, it's a learning process. They, everybody thinks that everything happens, you know, like in the blink of an eye and overnight and it doesn't, you have to put the work into it. You know, you, if you want this to be your career, then you have to understand that how hard people that have already been accomplished, how hard they work to get to where they are. You don't see the back end story. But I trust, trust me, believe me when I tell you, they spend hours upon hours upon hours every day and, you know, tons of hours during the week to, just to perfect what they do. And it, it shows in the end. Oh, my God. I, I feel so passionate. You're just really lovable. I really like thank you so much for taking this time. Oh, you're welcome. And my speaking pleasure. with me, because you have no idea how much you're going to be touching the future artists, which I already showed you. My son is right next to me listening to your every single word. Um, if this is something you want to do, 
And you see, I'm a parent here. I'm speaking as a parent and I'm speaking to my son while Albert is listening. If this is something you want to do. You need to do it step by step and do it right in order for you to have this career. Look, he's having fun with 100,000 hours a week <laughs> that he spends in his yeah. studio. Yeah. It's not easy. It's hard work, but it's literally you're, you're showcasing us all the passion that lies behind and the fact that you're collaborating on such a huge level in order to to make sure that the connection to the public get the, happens, you know, like everything to from A to Z. Is there anything I'm forgetting that you should um, let these future songwriters know or anybody that's in this uh, in this market? Uh, like I said, I think I think going back to collaborating with people that are better than you, it's the, it's the best thing that you could possibly do. Collaborate with other songwriters or, or, or and other musicians that are better at their, their craft than you are. That's like really, really, really the best way. And, and like I said, you know, study those songs. I study those songs, your favorite, your favorite artists, study the forms, just listen to them. Like I said, if you can count, then you're, you're, you know, it's like you, you got a, you got a good way of like starting at least, you know? So it's a, I mean, there's so many things that we can go about, about this, you know, it's, it's short, you can't learn everything in the 20 minutes, you know, segment that we're, we're doing here, but yeah. Um, like as you, YouTube is a, a really great source of, uh, of, of information and to be able to like, you know, as I, like I said, you don't have to go to a special course of songwriting. You literally can just go and listen to your song, study the song. Like, I have a feeling that I could get a workshop happening just of people. Uh, I know you're busy, but maybe a future workshop with you oh, um, yeah, would baby. be amazing. How can they find you just to get to know you more in Basebin? Like, where can they look up? Um, well, you can go to, you know, Basebin uh, Studios, uh, stu you know, basebinstudios.com. And, um, you know, it's like a, you can look me up uh, on the on the uh, on that website. Uh, you can email me at uh, basebinstudios at uh, gmail.com. But uh, please don't send me things to listen to. <laughs> I don't have, I really don't have time uh, for that. Uh, but um, listen, if anybody wants some consultation, there's some consultation fees, you know, it's like that I can attach if they really want to understand like what they're doing right and what they're doing wrong, then we can have, you know, like a sit in, you know, like a half an hour, you know, telephone, you know, or, or zoom meeting uh, conversation type of thing. We can fix up something like that. Albert, you're amazing. Thank you so much for your time. Cause I know you're in between sessions and I just, I'm grateful that you gave me this 30 minutes of, of talking and uh, how cool is this Montreal? Montreal is amazing. We have so Awesome. I know so much talent in here. And sometimes I wonder when people can find people, I'm like, we're so small, we're so present, and still people have no idea things here exist on so many platforms. People, people don't even know. They listen to music and they don't even know that mo a lot of the collaborations and a lot of the instruments and a lot of the riffs that you're hearing on songs, Titanium, the guitar at the beginning, that's my friend, Pierre Luc Rioux, straight up from Montreal right here. And like, they're doing beautiful, beautiful things, wow. you know? So they're, yeah, there's, there's, there's a lot in Montreal that Montreal has to offer. So, uh, so there's potentials, note, there's opportunities. Thank you so much, Albert. I will be keeping in touch <laughs> and I will be sending you so many people that have questions your way. Obviously there's going to be a fee. And if we can get a <laughs> workshop in with them, why not? So if you're interested, let me know. Thank you again, Albert. Make it happen. <laughs> yeah take, take action and make it happen i love it great <laughs> ending right there okay thank you